Why is it we do what we do? Why do we do the things that we do? Is it for long-term reasons? Or is it for short-term satisfaction? All right? Jesus tells us tonight in the Gospel about two men who built houses. One was built on a rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his... And the... Rains came tumbling. Come on, you don't know the song? <laughs> the wise man built his house upon the rock and the rains came tumbling down. And as the waters rose up, the wise man's house still stood firm, right? And the foolish man built his house upon the sand. It says without a foundation in our reading today, but... He built his house on the sand, and the rains came down. And when the rains came down, then his house went flat. Right. The foolish man's house just fell over because he wanted to get his house done quickly. It was for short-term gain. Right? Talk to anybody in that financial industry, and they'll tell you, short-term gain usually means long-term losses. Right? It's not a good thing for short-term gains. Those who hear God's Word and follow Him will listen and take time to do the things that God has called and asked them to do. They will not rush in for instant gratification. It's kind of like what Paul talks to the Galatians about in the fruit of the Spirit. Right? There are two worlds. There's the spiritual world, and then there's our world. And the spiritual world, Paul tells us, that we live in is that we're called into is not some cloudy, vague thing that we can't understand. It's something that we absolutely have clear sight and understanding of what it is. We, along with all of the first century believers, those in Galatia that Paul was writing to, have been called into a world that is empowered by, filled with, and shaped in accordance with God's Spirit. No question. We have the tools and the powers to do what God has called us to do and who He's called us to be. And verse 16 makes this absolutely very clear. He says, I continue to say this, keep on walking by the Spirit and by no means make the desires of the flesh your goal. As I was preparing for this, I looked this up in the message. I love Eugene Peterson's um, translation of the New Testament. And his version of this verse is, my counsel is this, Live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. Selfishness. Self-acts. Why do we do the things that we do? Right? Paul gives examples in, in the subsequent verses that come about things that are selfish and things that are spirit-filled. He is intent, mentioning in verse 21 that he's actually already spoken to the Galatians about this before. Right? He said, I'm reiterating what I've already told you. These things are bad, and they're not going to help you. Right? He has to go through these things again because they're brutally dangerous, not only to the individuals that are doing them, but to the community in which they exist. Such behaviors in the ancient world would separate one from God's reign. It would take you out of God's kingdom. Right? The world is shaped by God's Spirit, seen in Jesus the Messiah, has no room for these dangerous kinds of behaviors. Paul is telling the Galatians. And he's telling us. And what are those? Right? What does Paul say they are? Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, and carousing. And things like these. Just in case you didn't get caught up in any of the 15 before, Paul throws in the catch-all to say, none of you are beyond this. Every last one of you is doing something here that is wrong, and you shouldn't be doing it. So just in case you thought you slipped down the list, you didn't. And that includes me too. Right? And these are not small sins, but these are behaviors that can be potentially fatal to the individual doing them and to the community in which they live. They're used only to achieve something in this world that is shaped by cultural limits and cultural definitions, which means all of these things do something. What they do is give us self-satisfaction and they feed our egos and they give us instant gratification. 
It's about what I get right now. Not about what this does to anybody else around me. It's about how do I feel and what do I get. It's all about me in the moment. They're only self-serving. They lead to quick fix, easy highs, and happiness for the moment. And flesh defined good that only increases the downward spiral of the world in which we live. But the good news is the choice is absolutely ours. When Paul spoke both of the behaviors to get rid of or eschew, it's a big word for the night, eschew, and those to embrace, he spoke about them in a present tense, using a present tense verb, meaning that it's action that you are taking now that has implications into the future. And you have the choice. It's an ongoing practice. Those who continue to stay doing these kind of things, all you're going to do is damage yourself and the community you live in. But if you choose to do these, everything's going to be good. Because you're going to be following after God. Does that make everything's going to be easy and everything's going to be happy and we're all going to be just bubbly with joy? No, it doesn't mean that. But it means that life is going to be better because we're following after where God has sent for us to go. Verse 21 refers to those who continue these practices. It's that continual action of doing and doing again. Because Paul is aware, completely aware, of human community and human life and how that is something that we have to learn and something that we have to practice, something that we have to live. It's not something we get right the first time we do it. It's something that we have to do over and over again. It is to that life of ongoing learning, practice, and beginning again that Paul calls the Galatians and he calls each and every one of us. Because remember, Christians aren't perfect. We're just forgiven. Right? It doesn't matter how many times you fall down. It's what you do when you're down there. You ask for help to get back up. We make mistakes just like everyone else who's looking for a quick fix. But with someone who has God as our Father, we have a second chance. We get a do-over. We get a start again. If we're ready and willing to lift our hand up and ask for the help. Because you see, how we live deeply matters in this world where, the, where people do not understand that we belong to God or anything else or any other God for that matter. There's no greater being out there to some people. There's nothing that controls our destiny. And how we live absolutely matters. It's not just what we say, it's what we do day in and day out because our actions speak louder than the words that we speak. And the things that we do show what we believe and who we follow. Because your life is an example for others. We cannot be looking for a quick fix, but we must live out the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit. The word for Paul is not plural, it is singular. You must live out the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. Exactly. The other eight are attributes of love. You have to live out the fruit of the Spirit. Love, shown in joy and peace and patience and kindness, generosity and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Live out the fruit of the Spirit. Because that's what God did for you. He loved you when you couldn't love yourself. And lifted you up off the ground to give you a second chance, a new start. Paul reminds the Galatians and us that we are Christ. And that with Christ, we have been crucified in our flesh. The selfless life is not the only one. It's not the only avenue that is available for us. The quick fix, the looking out for ourselves... That isn't all there is. Indeed, in Christ, we have died to our selfless life and have been inducted into a life with new standards, new values, and new ways of being, and a new power in which to live that life. So take your do-over and live life focused on God, living in the fruit of the Spirit, showing His love in everything you say, and everything that you do.